Number 23, complete and balance the following oxidation reduction reactions, which give the highest possible oxidation state for the oxidized atoms. Okie dokie. And then we have letter B out of the bunch. So we need to make a equation that starts off with aluminum solid plus copper two bromide, right? That's aqueous. And we got to get the products. All right. So let's write it on the left-hand side here just so that I, li I like to write everything big. So we got this going on. Okay. All right. Now, and actually, I probably would need to squeeze this a little bit. Cool. Now, they, they gave us a hint here, right? This reaction is a single displacement reaction, which means that the atom that's all by itself is gonna get a little jealous, right? The atom all by itself is always a jealous atom. And what happens is the jealous atom wants to bump one of the elements out of the picture of the compound. But the thing is, who is aluminum going to bump out? Is it gonna bump out copper or is it gonna bump out the bromine? That all depends on what uh, oxidation state aluminum wants to be when it's oxidized or reduced. Don't want to give you the answer right now, right? But first, let's go through, you know, what an oxidized atom is. Remember, an oxidized atom goes by Leo. Leo, the lion, says Ger. Leo, L-E-O, is a loss of electrons, and that's always oxidation. So the one that is being oxidized or undergoing oxidation is always the one that's going to be losing electrons. Electrons are negative. So it's going to look like they're going to be more positive. So you, they'll be going up in number instead of down in number. Now let's see. Let's break down this compound to see what the charges were. The break between this compound is right where the copper and the bromine are, right? And we've done tons of problems in which we found out how to find out these ions when the compound splits up. Remember, if I just put this over here, Bu, uh, Cu, Br2, there's one copper and two bromines. Use those subscripts to crisscross back up to tell me what the charges were. This one told me that bromine was a negative one charge, right? The negative in the back is always standard, right? Because that's the one that gains electrons. And then the two crisscrosses back up, telling me that the copper was a plus two. Okay. So we have this right now. And that makes sense, right? Bromine being a negative one charge, bromine is all the way over here on the periodic table, group 17 or 7A. And when it's a compound, bromine will be a negative one. So that means that the copper will be a plus two in this case. Now, aluminum is all by itself, right? It's a solid. And what charges do atoms have when they're all by themselves? They have a zero charge. Now, when this aluminum wants to bud heads and get rid of one of the atoms in this compound, is it going to want to be the plus guy or is it want to be the negative guy? Well, let's look at the chart. Aluminum is over here. In a compound, aluminum wants to be a plus three charge. Doesn't want to be a negative. It wants to lose electrons. So this aluminum wants to go from a zero to a plus three charge when it makes its compound. So if it's going to be a plus three, it's got to kick out the one that's a positive, right? You can't have two positives and you can't have two negatives in a compound. One has to be positive and one has to be negative. So instead of copper hooking up with bromine, aluminum is going to hook up with you got it, bromine, because aluminum wants to be that plus three charge. And now let's find out what the uh, compound actually is. So when we make this compound, right, aluminum or aluminum, for all you guys across the pond, um, <laughs> aluminum is a plus three when it forms that compound and the bromine stays the same. It's a negative one. 
take those charges, crisscross them down to tell me what the compound is. This three crisscrosses down, telling me that uh, there should be three bromines in my compound. And this one crisscrosses down, telling me that I should have one aluminum. So I have a compound of AlBr3. So that's my first part. Okay, and maybe, maybe I will, let's see. Maybe I will kind of tighten this up a little bit. Just so that I have a little bit of room. Cool. And now let's see. Aluminum kicked out the copper so that it could be with bromine. So what's the copper doing, right? I can't just leave the copper out of the products. The copper still has to stay. But now, since copper is by itself, it's just going to be a metal. So it would just be plus Cu. And what is the state of copper? If it's just a metal, it's going to turn back into its solid form. So just be an S. What about the uh, state of AlBr3? This goes by your solubility rules, right? Bromine is a halide, and we know that bromine wants to be soluble, aka aqueous, majority of the time, but there are three ions in which, if it's bound with bromine, will turn the compound to being insoluble, being a solid. And those three atoms are lead, which is Pb, and that's over here, mercury, which is over here, and silver, which is over here on the periodic table. Aluminum is not that exception, so the whole thing would still be aqueous. Now we made the now we made the you know the equation and now we just got to balance it. So let's see. Hmm. I have two bromines here, and I have three bromines here. Two times something or two times a whole number won't get me three, and three times a whole number won't get me two. So the common number that they have between them is six, right? I can multiply uh, each one by the other number to get the similar number. So I can say. 2 times 3, right, I would have 6 total bromines, and then 2 times 3 will tell me that I have 6 total bromines. So now they're balanced. But now let's see. I have two aluminums here, and I only got one here. So I need to put a 2 in front of the aluminum. And let's just check on the coppers. I have three coppers on my reactant side, but I only have one here. So I need to add a three in front of the copper. So maybe if I could just squeeze that in, this would be like a plus, and then I'll put three. And that's it. This is my whole completed and balanced equation. And we made sure that we gave the oxidized atom, AKA aluminum, the highest possible oxidation state. On the chart, it wants to be a plus three. Aluminum cannot go any higher than losing three electrons, than being a positive charge. So this is your final answer. And that's it. So guys, hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you thought. And if it did, and if you want to help us out, you could hit that subscribe button. That'd mean the world to me. And thank you so much. I hope you have an awesome day and I hope you keep studying hard, okay? I will see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.